Thank you, uh, Madam President. I'd like to start by sharing a story. It is a personal story. It is a story about my parents and my family. My dad grew up on a farm in central Illinois. He had 12 other siblings. Other than a close bond with family and a strong work ethic, my dad was really on his own and yet became successful. My mom grew up in Allen Park, Michigan. She had an alcoholic father, but fortunately was close to her mother and older sister. She too was pretty much on her own and realized at an early age that when she married her husband, he was going to be, some, he, he was going to be special, loving to her and to my brother and I, and he was. She is also a, suc a success in her own right. My parents were very involved in the community. While the list is endless, PTA, church, homeowner boards, nonprofit organizations, local chambers, coach, supporting local politician, political candidates are just a few. And then at the age of 59 years old, my dad became a congressman and served for 16 years in that role. In addition, I have a brother who came out of the closet over 25 years ago, and I'm really proud of him and his success as a high-end interior designer. I say all this because my family isn't much different than a lot of other families. What is different is the example that my parents set for my brother and I and the importance of service to our community and public service. They led by example, and I remember them telling me, actions speak louder than words, something that I think is lacking in today's society. I am thankful and grateful to them and am proud of their legacy. Imagine being born hard of hearing. Imagine not speaking well, not having much of a vocabulary, and not being social in a verbal way. Imagine wearing a bulky hearing aid in the mid-1960s at three and a half years of age. Imagine being bused to a neighboring school district away from friends for special ed services at the age of four. Now imagine if this was your child. Imagine wondering how your deaf child in the 1960s was ever going to make it. This was my parents' child. I was that child. Aren't I blessed? Never in my parents or in my wildest dreams did they or did I think I would be a state senator. It is an awesome opportunity to serve, and I am thankful, and it goes to show you that anything is possible. I have, however, asked myself, why run for public office and why make these sacrifices when it can oftentimes be frustrating, especially in today's world of politics? I ask these questions not because I doubt myself, but rather to make sure that I'm doing it for the right reasons and to remind myself of the real purpose of my work in the Senate. I ask these questions to my wife as well for the same reasons. And while she is obviously biased, she is also a fair barometer of judgment. Being honest with ourselves is what keeps us grounded. Her answer and my answer is always the same. To serve, to make a difference, to represent the community, and to provide hope to those that need it. It is easy to get lost and lose sight of what our role as public servants is, and these questions, I believe, are important in understanding what our role as an elected member of the Michigan Senate really is. I believe that I have served for the right reasons. And my role was never meant to be a permanent thing. That was the intent of our founding fathers. Elections, term limits, and redistricting are responsible for that. Because our work is a part of our Senate's history, and while future legislators may change what we have done, 
our work has mattered in these chambers, given the precedent that we have set. I am simply the connector, and I view my job as an ambassador for my communities and my constituents. There are a number of people that I want to thank, and sorry, Senators, the important people are first. Obviously, my wife, Lori, who's standing up there, my parents, my mom is up there, and my family. You guys believed in me, especially you, Lori. You are my ally. You are my partner. You believed in me. You understood and you understand public service. And you made a lot of sacrifices for us. Thank you, and I love you. No doubt, my constituents, including those that voted for me, and even those that did not. I tried to represent everybody. I did my best, and I hope you felt the same way, even when we didn't always agree. Thank you for the opportunity to serve all of you. You know, we have a beautiful capital, and this building is special. And it is because of all the people that support us. This includes our sergeants, who make sure that we are safe and protected, and everybody in the front row, including our clerks, who make sure that our votes are accounted for, among other things. And to our Senate personnel, we really have some great people, smart, hardworking, dedicated, true servants. They include our fiscal analysts, our policy experts, our communications team, all supporting staff, my staff, present and past, all other legislative chiefs and legislative staff, HR, interns, pages, photographers. Got that, Patrick? I, if I've missed anyone or any group, you know, I apologize. Thank you all for making this a great place to be. My fellow, uh, my fellow senators, thank you. We are in the communications business and people business and it is hard work to try to make everyone happy, but I appreciate all of you and what you do. Well, I'd like to mention something about each of you. I only have time for two members. First, Coleman Young Jr. Now you are right, we probably don't agree on much, certainly not on free of the weed, but I respect you because you know your community and you know your constituency, and that is what public service is all about. I appreciate your passion to fight for their interests. Jack Brandenburg, you know, I hesitate to mention Jack, given that he's about a foot taller than I am, and I still have to sit next to him in caucus for the next few weeks. You know, I've been telling him for four years that I can take him. I just have never had the chance. Anyway, Senator Brandenburg is my finance chair. Finance members, pay attention because you will remember this story. We were in the old Senate building listening to testimony in the Finance Committee, and in the middle of it all, there is a loud noise. I mean, really loud. As the committee member looked over to where the noise came from, there was a hand raised from the floor, and a voice says, hey, I'm okay. <laughs> Something like that, that is my best impersonation. It is Jack Brandenburg on the ground, all six feet six and 300 pounds of him. Do I have that right, Jack? <laughs> it seemed like 300 pounds, I apologize if it's less than that. He had gotten up during testimony and stepped off the dais and tripped on the step. After he fell, he then got up and pretended like nothing happened. Man, I was laughing so hard, I had tears in my eyes. I had a hard time keeping quiet, but I wasn't alone. All the members were all chuckling too. Jack, I'm sorry, but I just had to tell this story. And I love you, you're great to me, and I appreciate having you as a friend. As I conclude, 
I would like to share one final story. As you may or may not know, my dad passed away this year on February 6th, which happens to be the day that Ronald Reagan was born. And I wish you all had the chance to meet him. He was a special man. I had the opportunity to attend a memorial service held at Statuary Hall at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. this past September. They were honoring 38 former members of Congress that passed away in the last year. I remember the beauty of the Capitol, the friendly guards, the excitement, and the energy that surrounded us. Not much different than here. I also remembered the civility during the ceremony. Nancy Pelosi, Jeff Flake, Tom Daschle were a few people I recall who spoke. They all seemed to get along. Not much different than here. I also talked to other current members of Congress, and they all seemed to respect each other. Not much different than here. It is a shame that the general public doesn't see it like we all do here. I truly believe in public service, and again, I am grateful and humbled to have been able to serve with all of you. Thank you, and God bless.